Okay, good afternoon and welcome to the second session of the Spring 2019 Synarchesis Digital Classics semester. Um, this week we're uh, talking about, sorry, just been distracted by a video starting in my background. Apologies for this. Yeah, sorry, that's infuriating and completely impossible to ignore. You couldn't hear that, but I was I was completely distracted by an echo of myself several seconds behind. Um, so sorry, starting again. This is this is the um, the second session, which is on uh, using online linguistic tools, dictionaries, and text corpora. And this session will be um, presented by Maria Veros from Helsinki, who you know as she's co-organising this this semester and um, chaired last week's. Um, seminar um, by uh, Helmer Dick from Chicago and Bridget Almas, who works at the Altheus um, project. And they will all briefly introduce themselves when they um, when they start. Um, and so, as usual, there'll be some um, presentations and demonstrations, and there'll be a little bit of discussion at the end. Um, anybody who's watching this live on YouTube, feel free to use the um, the YouTube live chat function in the top right hand corner, and we'll keep an eye on that and pass any questions you have to um, to the speakers as we uh, as we go along. So um, I will. I think so. Maria, I think is starting us off. I'll uh, I'll pass the video over to um, to Maria to uh, to take over. Okay. Good evening. Uh... Good evening from Helsinki, I would say, like to say. Um, so, uh, welcome to this ses second session, and I will start by screen sharing right away. All right. Do you see my screen now? Yes, yes. Okay. So here again our title. Um, <clears throat> and uh, the structure of the session today is divided into four pieces. So I will first shortly introduce, uh, introduce some uh, available online text corpora for Greek and Latin and their search possibilities. And then Helma will talk about Logeon and Perseus under Philologic. And then Bridget Almas will talk about Alpheus. How does that work? Uh, and then I will probably quite shortly introduce some possibilities for syntactic queries with the available tools we have at the moment. So basically we will be covering all sorts of searching, string searching, lemma searching, part of speech, searching and syntax display and syntax query. So I will start with the basic text corpora for Greek and Latin. Um, these are things I'm quite sure that many of you have been using quite a lot, or at least to some extent. Um, <clears throat> uh, the point of this session is not to give the basics uh, of these tools or corpora, but uh, take this from the point of view of uh, linguistic queries are trying to search for some more complicated structures. Is that is that possible? Um, but of course, some basic things will be shown as well. So here we have some corpora. So for the main thing for Greek uh, literature is TLG. And for Latin, we have several different corpora, classical Latin texts. The Latin Library, uh, the Biblioteca Toibneriana, and a Library of Latin Texts by Brebolis. And then we have a combined uh, Greek and Latin uh, corpora, the Perseus Digital Library, uh, and that we will talk about more today, and then Loeb Classical Library, for, ex for instance. So I uh, used the color coding here so that with black font, uh, we have open access databases, corpora, and in gray, we have those things that need some sort of subscription. And uh, the search features and downloading possibilities for the results or data, 
really differ from one another. One another, and I will not be going through all these corpora. These are just mentioned here. So when you look at these, you always need to sort of familiarize yourself with the basic methods of querying in that particular corpus and see what it is all about. Um, so I will first go to the Greek corpus, TLG, and then after that I will talk about Perseus Digital Library and the SCAFE uh, URL. So TLG is uh, really a great tool in many respects. There has of course been also quite a lot of criticisms for that, as you could see from the readings that were provided for this session. For example, that there is only one edition selected and there's no apparatus criticus available there, but it's a, a really a sizable whole text corpus. So there is Greek literature from starting from Homer uh, and going all the way to the 14. 53. And it started quite early from the 70s, and there is still the development is ongoing. So th there are quite a substantial development all the time about how to search and query. Uh, it's only partly open access, so only, only the abridged TLG and the lexica and the canon, the list of, of the authors are all open, and then the full corpus is not. But um, the search possibilities are quite good. Morphological data can be used, there's intertextual phrase matching, uh, engrams, and different types of, of searches. And I will shortly show some of them. Just a little bit first about the uh, thing which is really important and you have you will uh, encounter it in during the synoikis session uh, this spring later on so the regular expressions so in TLG they are partly possible to use in searches they are there in the wildcard section so this is the screenshot from from TLG how the uh, there uh, wildcard works. So not all of the regular expressions are possible to use there in TLG, but some of them are. So this help section will, will help you to perform your queries. So for example, if you have some options of how to, how do you want to uh, search something which has some difference, like one letter difference here is anadu or anedu. There are actually three different ways to perform this query. So either with the square brackets or with this uh, vertical bar, or then just taking the first part of this with the vertical bar and then the rest of the word outside the parentheses. So it's probably very useful to already get to know through regular expressions if, if, you, if you haven't already done that. Um, right, now I think I will go and see the TLG, how does it work? So as I said, it's partly open access. Uh, it's even though if you use only the lexica you need to log in, otherwise it will just give you the possi possibility to see a couple of words and then it asks you to register. And for the access to that full corpus, uh, you, you would have to pay if you are not affiliated to an institution, but luckily, many universities, university libraries, are uh, have been uh, pay, paying for the institutional license. So, for example, my my account is via my my university, so I can use the full corpus. 
So you possibly could just, you have probably been using this and browsing texts, finding a certain text from certain author, for example. So I will not go through this kind of thing. I will try to uh, show some examples of, of the searches. Is it possible to zoom in a little bit, please, Maria? Right. OK. Is this enough? Perfect. Thank you. Good. Um, so it's always also just a good, good to try different things with yourself. But I will show some uh, interesting things. So for example, if we there is possibility to search from three different types in in the in the texts uh, the word index or the lemma search or the textual search so i could just type in the world word gore which is girl uh, in greek girl or a maiden and not use any diacritics and any anything else to define this search and see what it gives me in, in word index. It gives me a list of, I was now searching from full corpus, by the way, I could define it just to one author or one work or several works upon my selection. So it does give me uh, different options. I could deselect some of these forms here. It also gives me a search count. But then again, I might just rather want to look for uh, the Kore was also used as a name for uh, Persephone, daughter of Demeter. So I could use the case sensitive search and the lemma search. Sorry, I need to first um, maybe I'll use the accent as well. So here it's offering me all these possibilities and I do want to use this basic dictionary entry for this lemma search. And now it gives me all possible different inflections also and also different uh, ways of writing this name, but it's the same name. So I might then also limit the search by not wanting to use these versions that also has uh, omicron, omicron epsilon or something like that. So there are possibilities to limit this and it's a good thing that you have uh, the possi possibility to find all different inflections of the same, same word. Then if we would use this textual shirts for the same thing. You see it's uh, actually now I would have to limit the search myself by different uh, parameters, because now it's also taking things that are in between the word. But if I, uh, again, use, for example, case sensi sensitivity here, it will just bring me only the forms that match this, this and something that comes after it. So different entries there. Um, <clears throat> The nice thing with the DLT is also when you just click on the word, any word, 
you can actually get the uh, possible morphological anal analysis here. And if you weren't already doing a lemma search, you can do the lemma search here directly. So now we did the same as before, but from a different point of uh, entry. Now, uh, what sort of potentially <laughs> linguistically interesting questions we could also study? Um, could we search for different verb forms, for example, without uh, searching for a particular word? Because that's linguists are not necessarily wanting to search for particular word, but basically some structures or some morphological forms, for example. So here uh, we could make use of, of the wild card, which I showed earlier. So I could, for example, if I would uh, want to uh, find infinitives, med medial infinitive forms. So I could use the ending uh, Sorry. So now I used one of these wildcard elements, which is the dot. So it's any any character is possible there. So now I'm looking for, well, we can see what I am looking for. I am looking for words with end sasthai or sesthai. So there is basically asthai or esthai. I could have performed this, of course, with a different wildcard possibility, because uh, there are actually no other vowels that could be there except alpha or epsilon. Uh, <clears throat> so this works when, when we have a nice uh, ending that is not going to be mixed with something else. But that's not, of course, always the case. Um, <clears throat> But in fact, yeah, that's not <laughs> something we can help here. We could also then, I have been now showing you this simple search, but we could use the proximity search to have uh, different um, combinations of words. So for example, I would rather take the textual search where we can use the world card again and for example uh, I might be interested in what um, if the ver one verb the Lego to say would could be followed by the future or aorist infinitive And I could say if it's near or before or after Lego, probably I would like to use before here. So this also now gives us a bit more possibilities to search for certain structures, but again, usually we always need to use some, some word as a starting point. Um, <clears throat> then again, there is, um, Okay, now, okay, so sorry, this was, this should have been after, <laughs> of course. Now, but here, in fact, then we need to look up uh, every entry and see if it's actually, they are connected to each other. Um, So now I would have wanted to also show, to so show you the possibility that there was 
Let me go back a bit. For example, here we did in this lemma search, there is a possibility to display the results uh, as a list per word, per author, and by grammar. So, in a way, you could, if we would have now exact had the uh, verb uh, form, the infinitive, for example, but here we now have a noun, but we can actually then delimit this search by morphology. So we could use, we want only genitives and datives of this word. So this gives us a bit more possibilities to find some linguistic structures here. Um, okay, I think I have used too much time on this. Uh, let me find. I have um, listed these uh, possibilities here uh, in the in my in my slides. I did not now have time to show the uh, engrams. In fact, uh, how do you feel? I do you still want me to show a little bit about Perseus Digital Library and and Skyfi? Oh, Skyfi. I'm sorry. What What do you think, Helmer and Helmer and Bridget? We've We've had about twenty minutes so far. I'm sorry. I did not realize that I would be using so much time. Uh, Maria, it's 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 really up to you. I would. Um, I would love to hear you about the syntactic searches um, at, at the at the end of the session too, though. So okay. I don't know how you want to distribute your. Okay, your, then I will time. stop now. <laughs> at this point, I have in my slides I have the Perseus Digital Library uh, links, okay. and and then I can. Uh, yeah, that's it. The, the SCAFE viewer is likely to be of particular interest to um, to students following this, especially those who don't have access to the full TLG. So, um, do you think you could you could maybe give a, a two or three minute, very quick, just a view of what the interface looks like and just show the possibilities without necessarily demonstrating them? Yes. So, Perseus Digital Library uh, has Greek and Latin text, and SCAFE viewer is a sort of newer version, a nicer interface uh, on on um, on uh, using the Perseus digital library. So you can find texts, but you can also search. So here you can again use just form or lemma, and you have some search guides here right away. Uh, Could you zoom in again a little bit? I'm sorry, to... yes. Uh, no, the long, wrong way. Oh my gosh, yeah, I had Greek. Um, so, for example, for, for unfortunately, the lemma search is only for Greek, but you can, for the Latinist can also go around it. Uh, so if I would want to search different forms of form uh, the word libellus, the small book, for example, I could use this or possibility and have all different uh, inflections of this word, of course. And then I can search. It's taking a little while. And now it gives me in all all the texts, uh, it finds different these any of these words that I I put there, and um, yeah, uh, there was also in in text browsing the pos possibility to uh, select. Uh, sorry, they this one didn't have. Uh, Let's take Cicero, for example. We have the possibility to uh, parallel view all the di different editions that
that are included in this corpus. Uh -huh. It doesn't want me to continue. <laughs> I will turn now uh, to Helma and, and, and then we'll continue later with the syntactic queries. Great. Thanks, Maria. Okay, um, good morning, everybody. <laughs> it's evening in Helsinki, or maybe already pitch dark night, but um, here the day has barely started. Um, I'm so glad that there was an internal server error today already. So whatever happens, it's uh, <laughs> it won't won't be the first uh, won't be the first glitch. It's the life of the digital classicist, shall we say? Um, I will turn to my uh, browser. Uh, to uh, show you um, a um, in broad outline uh, two projects um, I and my students, in fact, um, have been uh, working on in the past years. First, um, Logaeon, um, a collection of dictionary uh, resources. And then I'll turn to um, Perseus under Philologic, um, which is the, using some of the same texts, in fact, that the SCAFE viewer uses, it's all coming from the uh, Perseus uh, mothership. Um, and, uh, but it's a smaller uh, collection. Uh, you can search it um, in several ways that are slightly different from the TLG um, and, uh, and the SCAFE viewer. So um, I'll uh, try to demonstrate these different um, these different options uh, to you this morning. But uh, let me start by sharing my screen and getting to my uh, browser so you can look over my shoulder as I play with my toys. Okay. Well, this is falling in the middle of uh, a, a search that I just did as uh, Maria was uh, comparing the, uh, or was, was doing the same search on um, TLG. So we shouldn't be starting here. I'll get back to this one uh, later. Uh, here is the interface that greets you. Um, I hope everybody can, um, can see my um, Safari browser? Yeah, looks fine. If you okay. can zoom in just a little bit, that might, that might okay. help. Okay, sure. Let's okay. see. I don't want to uh, lose my different uh, sidebars, but they're they're still uh, visible. So um, I'm uh, I'm in okay shape still. Um, uh, on purpose, when you go to Logan U Chicago. Um, we already look up a very short word for you, lexidium. Um, and uh, so that gives you a sense of the outline of the page. Um, and when you've looked up a word, you'll see headers for dictionaries that feature that word. So in, in here, we have Lewis and Short and the French uh, dictionary uh, Gaffiot, an older dictionary that has been painstakingly entered. Um, even if you don't know French, it's really helpful to um, uh, to look at Gaffio next to um, your more familiar English dictionaries because, for instance, the citations um, have been all modernized from what they were in the 19th century and what they were in Lewis and Short. So if you want a particular line in Plotus and you don't want it to show up as Act 1, Scene 1 with a line or worse, Act 4, Scene 3 with a line, um, you are always much better off with, uh, with Gaffio. And hey, you might pick up some French um, in the process. Uh, more frequent words. Oh, I'm in my Greek keyboard. Uh, more, more frequent words show up with more dictionaries, as you can tell. Um, here comes Ducange, a famous uh, medieval dictionary. And you'll see some other uh, uh, features of Logaion um, showing up in the sidebars. This is a frequent word. Uh, we give you some 
frequent combinations with this word. So apparently Lex shows up very often in the near in the in the vicinity of another Lex. It shows up in the neighborhood of Dico, Faro, Facio, use. Um, the the use that is right and not gravy, I think. Um, that's why it's used to. Um, it shows up a lot in Seneca the Elder and Tertullian, apparently. And it shows up in bunches of Latin textbooks. So if you are a user of Wheelock, um, I am hereby reminding you that as of chapter 26, I hope you can see that right bottom of my screen. Um, as of chapter 26, you were supposed to know this word. Um, when uh, you uh, go to a, um, oh, let's try if, if it actually works for, for Lex as well. Um, a feature that we've recently added, whoops, I want to go back to Lex, um, is this inverse ordering of the word wheel. Um, you see here our alphabetical ordering of dictionaries. And um, I am wandering with my fingers clearly. You see our, you see our alphabetically order of all the headwords in all the dictionaries, which can be quite specific depending. Um, but you can push this button and get the inverse ordering. So an ordering that is alphabetically uh, ordered from the back of the word. So here come all the words that end in X, E, and L, as it turns out. Uh, so that is a lot of actually specific um, uh, laws. We can keep going. And eventually, we will also see words that end in lex showing up here. Uh, so uh, this can be handy for papyrologists, people who are interested in um, uh, suffixes of words and not just prefixes of words. So um, we, we, um, we copied this, stole this, I was going to say, um, from the dictionary of um, Greek to Spanish that is done in Madrid. Um, they have this set up for, um, for their dictionary and I thought it was a wonderful um, feature to add. So I hope uh, you enjoy it as well as you uh, use it. Um, in, the, uh, in the web version of Logaion, you'll see that if I type a few characters, a combination of uh, words in Greek and Roman characters shows up um, to make sure that not too many words show up on a small phone screen and to also um, make it slightly faster um, on the phone app. Uh, we ask you to use Greek characters for looking for Greek and normal Roman characters for looking for Latin. Um, on the website, you can do um, you can do both. Um, it will try to transliterate into Greek words, and those are ordered by length. So the longer the word, the, the further down the list this is going to appear. So if you were looking for logographos, then you should just add another letter here, and it should come closer um, in your um, in your drop down menu. And then if this is the one you wanted. Here's how you can um, access it. And you can also, your mileage may vary there, you can also click on words in the entries to get to the next entry. So here we go to Syngrafaus. Um, that works, it's another nominative. If it's a word that is also in our morphological databases, like Logon, I can click on it and it will redirect me to Logos. And it will tell me that that logon that I looked up is a genitive plural masculine, in case you were wondering. Um, I could also be a startled student who is, for the first time, encountering this particular word. I'm going to try to copy it. I haven't looked for it in a dictionary. Let's assume that I've found it in a text. I can copy and paste a full uh, word here and hope for the best. And OK, I'm lucky. Um, it's parsed as a form of apophero. So uh, here I get the apophero entry. I could, and see what happens, I could try and 
um, and see if I actually want to look at something else. Um, but it doesn't look like, whoops. It's, oh, look at that. There is an entry up en negen. That also refers to apophero from the print dictionaries. Um, if I go back to apophero, you'll once again see collocations, frequencies, textbooks here. Um, an indication of the frequency um, so that as you are looking things up, you'll know that if it's not ranked at all, then maybe you should, in your study, focus on other things first. One thing I want to um, quickly point out is this big reported problem uh, button on the right-hand side. If you see typos, corrections, etc., cetera, um, please let us know. Um, if you have other problems, um, here is a quick walkthrough that might help you figure out why things are not working for you. Um, and um, But here you can describe the problem, and we'll get back to you if you leave an email um, address. Um, so this is a very quick um, walkthrough of uh, Logeon. Um, uh, we hope uh, to uh, make it still more international. Here is the, um, the Spanish. Um, uh, in years to come and um, have this be uh, less of an English only oriented uh, oriented website. Um, there will be more French and I hope German um, and I hope many other languages um, to come in the future. Um, to go to um, to make the, the um, transition to uh, to philologic, um, let me first show you uh, the philologic interface for just searching um, Little and Scott. Um, this is what I, um, what I had until 2011 or 12, where you could uh, search one dictionary at a time, and you could look for the headwords, which you still can do in Logaion, and um, you could look for words in the full text of the dictionary. Uh, but you could never really tell in advance, and you couldn't search them together, whether in fact Little and Scott, or the Middle Little, or Out and Read for Homer, um, would actually give you your lucky um, match for the lemma that you were looking for. And within Philologic, it's great at you looking at multiple texts. Uh, but for dictionaries, it really works best if you search one dictionary at a time. So you can still do that um, if you go to Perseus U Chicago LSJ. Um, you can still do it. Um, but I think you'll always be, um, uh, be getting to what you want faster if you use the Logaion um, interface. Um, unless you are the kind of geek who wants to find out how often Olbia is mentioned in the full text of the dictionary. Uh, in that case, you should really um, look in the full text uh, search. But that's a, not the usual way in which people tend to use dictionaries. So let me move to Perseus under Philologic. I, um, uh, I started this, um, um, this project a number of years ago. Um, when um, uh, when Perseus was in its pre-scafe uh, state, um, I always uh, compare Perseus uh, Tufts um, to the perfect library carol, uh, where you can read a primary text um, surrounded by translations and grammars and dictionaries. Um, you can find everything in the sidebar, and everything connects to everything. Um, in comparison, um, this is um, not so much aimed at reading um, continuous text, even though you can do that. Um, it's more to, um, to find the places where you might want to uh, read. Um, so you can still uh, you can um, type in a citation 
um, in this box over here and start reading. And um, if you click on a word, you'll get the uh, morphology. Green means that somebody has decided that this is a feminine accusative singular. Blue means an automated tagger has decided that. So you could read um, and um, take a quick look at the English um, translations that are available. Um, but this interface is really primarily about searching. Um, so uh, for instance, uh, what was that word that I just clicked on? Um, I think it was astemfes, not a particularly frequent word, but anyway. Um, and in this orthography line, I'm using transliteration um, because I didn't want to change my keyboard. I'm going to search the texts. Did I get it right? Oh, yes. Okay. This was actually the word that I was looking for, astemfea. And you'll see that the 10 instances in the corpus that it can find of this word um, uh, show up. It may be that you find the keyword in context um, format uh, helpful. And so you, uh, you, can see that, uh, you can see that here. Um, so that was one of the first um, changes that we made to the, um, uh, to the full um, philologic interface as it already existed for French and other texts. Uh, that we decided to make it possible to search for lemmas by writing this lemma colon word. And it doesn't really make a difference then if you use the transliteration or with diacritics, etc. You just need to, um, the system is very picky. So if I were to hit search again with full diacritics selected, um, nothing will show up. Let me demonstrate. Nothing will show up. Okay. So, Make sure that if you use transliteration, you click that radio button because the system will not understand you. Perhaps you um, really only are interested in this word showing up in Homer. In that case, use the bibliographic search field and you'll find the Homeric uh, examples. Helmut, just and to say yes. there's about yes. uh, 20 minutes left in this, in this okay. so the yes. first hour, okay. just to just Let make me, a guideline. Yeah. Okay, okay. So I will uh, quickly continue. So the lemma search you saw in, um, in, uh, in TLG, uh, what I'd recommend that you, um, you try out for yourself um, is what happens, for instance, if you search in, say, Homer or Thucydides, or Thucydides for a verb like hormeo, um, and you, um, oh, transliteration. Lemma hormeo, oh, it doesn't show up in Homer, boom. Let me try Herodotus. So um, here come my instances horme of hormeo um, when searched um, um, in Perseus under Philologic. Um, try it. Um, in the TLG interface, and you'll get a radically different result. And um, the reason is um, that there are many forms that, in principle, not really this one, but in some certain dialects, um, many forms that, in principle, could be from different verbs. And in Perseus under Philologic, we try to decide which one goes with which lemma um, so that you don't have to uh, decide that. Um, I could, in combination with this, I could say, um, let me um, let me use a lemma uh, dokeo. Um, I could say, okay, I want this in a third singular form. Now I'm using a semicolon and then POS for part of speech, and a third singular. 
and I have now changed to full diacritics. So I get here, I'm still looking in, in Herodotus, I'm getting the 190 occurrences in um, Herodotus of this combination. If I take this out, I get first the first 25 because the system is wanting to count it up. And here you have the 5,533, which you can go through um, in order over here. Um, so for particular constructions like doke or edoxe, edoxen, etc., cetera, um, if you wanted to, um, uh, to look for those specifically, um, this is the way you could look for only third person singulars of dokeo. I can take this out and I would be looking for any verb in the third singular. Again, I get Eskenes endlessly first. And this search is still in progress. 232,114. Well, you can guess that that will keep going. Um, and it will allow you to page through one at a time here at the bottom. And you can check search progress for where we are. And we now have, OK, well, this is still um, going for a bit. OK, we now have oh, a total of 246,000 something occurrences. It's you know not as big a corpus as some other corpora. Uh, so I showed you lemma searching. I showed you part of speech searching um, these mysterious abbreviations for verb third singular um, you can find in the info and help tab um, um, on the search page um, in the same way um, if you wanted to try and find different forms of edux shall we say um, I'm narrowing it down a little bit. And you want those in order of their occurrences, um, in, in, order of their, uh, in order of their forms. Uh, you can try the quick report. This will now show up a little more slowly because it is ordering it not only by the keyword, but also by the word to its right. Um, and this can also really be helpful in getting a sense of how the word gets used in, um, in context. Uh, so you'll, um, you'll see certain, um, certain patterns emerging by just looking through the alphabetical order of, um, um, of these instances. And you can reorder these here as you wish. If you're wondering, let me do that maybe as a last thing. This is the line by line uh, result. If you're wondering um, who uses this the most, you can use the frequency by author per 10,000 um, measure. Um, and you can ask for collocations. So what kind of words show up with um, edux? You get a word cloud of more frequent words. The bigger they are, the, the more frequent they are in alphabetical order. And here are the same words ordered by whether they are to the left or to the right of the word. Um, so um, you can decide to do something. And here are the combinations of these, um, of these verbs. So maybe... Um, I should stop here, um, Gabby, and um, hand it over uh, to you or answer questions, depending. Or maybe we should go straight to Bridget. And ah, okay. I'm projecting Bridget now. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm just gonna start right by sharing my screen. Um, 
So um, I'm going to talk about um, using the Alpheus tools for reading and word study. And um, I think the a, an interesting analogy here might be that if if Perseus, I, I like Helma's statement that Perseus is the perfect reading corral. If Perseus, Perseus is the perfect reading corral uh, where you can go and, and use all the tools that you want for the text it has, Alpheus tries to be to let you take that reading corral with you to whatever text you want to read. So our tools um, are for making learning and reading classical text as efficient and as joy enjoyable as possible. And um, they're currently manifested as browser extensions for the Chrome, Safari, and Firefox browsers, and also as an embeddable JavaScript library that um, you could use in a text that you wanted to publish or another site could use in a text that they want to publish so that users don't have to install the tools to use them. Um, what do they do? So they enhance any text that you read in the browser with clickable access to dictionary entries, morphological analyses, inflection tables, and grammars. So many of the tools that you were already seeing in uh, the demos of the SCAFE library of Perseus, with TLG, and Philologic, they're, they're probably subsets of some of those, different sets of others, but they bringing those tools directly to the text you want to read. Um, Latin and ancient Greek are fully supported, and we have some partial support for classical Arabic and Persian. Um, so to install them, there are a couple things. You can go directly to the alpheus.net site and click on that little install button that you see at the on the homepage if you have ac accessed that page from Safari, Firefox, or Chrome on the desktop. Um, you can also go directly to um, the the extension browser extension locations for each of these uh, browsers um, and. Um, once you have installed them, and I'll do a live demo later, but I want to just walk through quickly the functionality. Once you have installed the browser extensions, you get a little um, Alpheus icon in your browser toolbars, and you can click on that to activate the tools. So you could say, go to the Latin library, which is an open source resource for Latin text, and you could click on the Alpheus icon in your toolbar, and it would then activate the tools. Um, then to actually see something, you just double click on any word on the page. And that will bring you to a, um, a pop-up which has uh, morphology and short definitions for the word. So you will have, so that in this case, we looked up familiaribus and it, you can see it provides some short definitions, provides the, the inflections, the possible inflections, a part of speech, that sort of thing. Um, from there, you can uh, delve further into the grammar by clicking on one of the, the linked grammar, grammatical terms. So here we've, clicked on the dative term and it brings um, to the page in the New Latin Grammar by Charles Bennett um, to provide more information about what the dative is. You can read fuller definitions by clicking on the define button and that will bring you to a full entry in the dictionaries that we have available. Um, we currently have Lewis and Short loaded for uh, Latin and a variety of dictionaries for Greek, including LSJ, the Middle Little, and Outen Reese. Um, you may also in examine inflection tables um, that are specific to the particular inflections, possible inflections of the of the words you've looked up. So here it brings me to um, first to the noun declension for um, for the word, and it highlights in yellow the exact matches in the inflection table. So here the dative, ablative, and locative are highlighted in yellow. <clears throat> in the third declension, but it also shows you what are some other possible matching endings um, in the other declensions by highlighting those in blue. And you can expand to the full table to examine the whole inflection and you can switch between the different possible inflections. So in this case, that drop down there that has the noun would also show me the adjective declension. Um, you can also look up any word. So if the word you're interested in is not one that you're actually reading in the page, you can enter it by looking it up in the, the lookup uh, box on the pop-up or in um, the panel that, that, that comes up with fuller access to information. Um, right now, it's not that obvious how to get that panel back. If you haven't done a lookup, you, you can access it from the context menu by right-clicking in your browser and you'll see that you have a little info menu option which will then bring open the panel with further access to tools. From within that panel, you can um, browse the full grammar, so not just see the specific linked term in the grammar, but browse the entire grammar 
um, you can browse full sets of inflection tables. Um, and I'll show you that live in a few moments. We have Latin, full tables for Latin and Greek available for browsing. Um, and you can also configure some preferences of the tools. Um, that's by clicking available by clicking on the options button on the pop-up that you get when you look up a word or by clicking on the little settings wheel in the panel. And some of the important preferences you might want to change here. Um, you can change the default language for a page. We try to detect what page what language a page is in, but if we're unsuccessful, we may will default to whatever you've chosen as the language default. So if you're both working with Latin and Greek, you may sometimes have to change the page default. If you work primarily with Latin and don't care if if you're if you're not reading Greek, then you just leave it as Latin. Um, you can also choose which lexicons you get the definitions from. So in the case of Latin, we only have Lewis and Short, but as I mentioned in Greek, we have a number of lexicons loaded and you can choose to get definitions from all, some, or just one of them um, as you prefer. Another interesting um, experimental feature that you may want to enable just to, um, to experiment with it if you are working with Latin right now, it's only available for Latin, hopefully for Greek soon. Um, you, can, uh, you can pull in some lemma, lemma translations. So in this case, you can, I've, I've selected to see the French translations and you can see that they appear below the short definitions in the pop-up. This, this feature is not um, fully developed yet, but it would be something we would love to get some feedback on. Um, uh, one of the nice things about this round of the LFS tools is that they do work with Google Docs. So if you're working on your own text or working on selections of text within Google Docs or other similar online tools, you can actually just activate them in the page and then you can get the same functionality available for, those, for that text as well. Uh, so I'll just take you through a quick demonstration of them. I'm so sorry about the... the <laughs> the windows there. Uh, so here I've got the um, the Biblioteca Agostana loaded and you can see here in the corner of my toolbar is the Alpheus icon. It's grayed out because I um, have not activated it. Once I, once I activate it, it turns blue. I activate it by clicking on it. And, and upon activation, it normally brings up that panel that I showed you. Um, I can close the panel, but then I the tools are remain active and I can just double click on a word and um, you can see here is the pop-up that I showed you in the slides. Is it possible to zoom in a little bit, Bridget? Yep. Without, without losing the... the How's that? Perfect, yeah, thank you. Okay. So here you can see the, the linked terminology for the grammar, the full definitions, um, the inflection tables and uh, to show this is both an intensive and reflexive pronoun, so we can can switch back and forth between those to see um, the different inflections. And um, here is are the options that I, panel that I was showing you. Um, we can look if we want to look at the at the inflections for a minute to browse the inflections. Um, it will open here since I'm working with Greek. It opens directly to the Greek browser open, and here you can actually um, see one or more of the inflection tables at a time. If what you're interested in doing is just studying some of the inflections, Latin is also available. And there's different ways on which you can can sort the some of these tables. Um, again, to bring that panel up, once you've closed it, you just right click on your browser and you click um, on the info item there, and it will bring it back up. Um, it's nice and big now. I'm going to try to bring it back. Um, and the other um, thing that's nice that's available from here is again the browsing of the grammar. Um, we can switch to uh, a Latin site. And um, if I activate the tools here, you can see one of the, the th problems that might come up is, oh, actually I have already enabled it for Latin here. But if I had not set the language to Latin, I had Greek, for example, you might, you might get no um, results here. And it tells you that you're searching in Greek and maybe you wanna change. And that's one way, simple way to take care of that problem. And again, you can look up terms directly in the in the lookup box, 
you can look up in another language. You could have your main language be Latin, but say you wanted to look up a Greek term, you could change it and, and look up. I do not type Greek myself, so let me just copy and paste the word. So you can work with more than one language at a time, which can be helpful if you're working with multiple with a, a multilingual text. Um, just to show that the tools also can be used with other of some of these other sites that we've already looked at. So you can actually use Alpheus with the SCAFE viewer if you want additional information. In some cases, this is going to be redundant um, if you know SCAFE already has some very specific morphological information. But it can, and and in fact, because Percy, because Alpheus is built on on open source tools, including the some that have been provided by Perseus, you'll get some similar similar results. But they can it can be used as a companion with some of these sites as well. Um, I want to just go back to the presentation for a minute to talk about some of the other features that are available. Um, as I mentioned, you can use Alpheus with your own site as an embedded library, and it's really simple to do it. So if you're in this, I, I don't know, it'd be interesting to get some feedback on this, whether or not this is useful to students. But if, say, you're probably preparing a, a publication or a small paper or something and you want to, and you're doing it online and you want to include some of these features, you can do that just by embedding, embedding the Alpheus tools directly in. And we publish the, the library on a, on a CDN, so it's pretty easy to just add it into your page. And um, more instructions are provided if needed, but that's pretty much all you, there is to it. You just provide links to the style sheets and the JavaScript and have a small bit of JavaScript that enables it. Um, you can also enhance Alpheus with linguistic annotations, such as tree banks and translation alignments. So here is a screenshot of a text which has been aligned with a tree bank. This is a propertious elegies, and and with an aligned translation. And in this case, when you mouse over a word, you can in the the Latin you see the the aligned translation, and um, you have an extra button in your pop-up, which is a diagram button, which brings you up the, a tree, a tree bank of the of the syntax of, of the sentence. Um, this is not available for many texts at the moment, but we are certainly hopeful that we can in continue to increase the library of texts which have these annotations. And you can publish your own texts with annotations embedded. They don't have to use the Alpheus site or resources to do so. These are some of the, the requirements for integrating annotations. For tree banks, we need tree bank data that's been aligned at the sentence and word level, which adheres right now to the Perseus slash Alpheus schema for tree banking and uses a supported tag set from Arethusa, the Arethusa. And I think in the future, um, Sonoika session, you're going to learn more about some of these tools. Um, and for translation alignments, it needs to just be a word aligned translation with um, the alignments embedded in markup. Alpheus supports a, an alignment editor and a tree, the Arethusa tree bank editor, which um, can be used to create these aligned annotations, but that's not the topic of the session today. So I'm not going to talk further about them at the moment. Um, but if you want to see some example texts with integrated annotations, here are some links in the slides um, to provide you with them. And I can show you those quickly right now, just to show you the difference of how that works. So this is the, the, the text that was in the slide that I showed you. And you can see when you mouse over a text, uh, a word on the Latin, you get the English and, and vice versa. You can, the English will bring you, show you the aligned Latin. And then you can um, investigate the sentence diagram. Oops, I'm sorry. I think I'm almost out of time, so I'm going to try to make this quick. But you can see how the, set, the sentence has been diagrammed. Um, for its dependencies and its um, morphology further. Um, you can see that this one was done by a number of editors. So we have we do try to provide credits to the people that have done the that have done the annotations. Um, let's see. 
So uh, some additional features that are coming soon, we will soon have the ability for you to log in with a user account and begin to aggregate word lists with the context in which you've seen the words. So as you look up words, they'll be added to your word list and you can see where you've seen them and you can flag them as something you wanna review later or not um, and download those lists and do other things with them, such as if you wanted to put them into a, into a, a flashcard app or something like that. So um, that's one of the features we're working on. We're also working on integrating usage examples, uh, starting with Latin and a mobile UI, which will be available for a subset of hosted texts. And I just wanna mention that Alpheus is fully open source and would not be possible without um, the resources of, of, of many longstanding projects in the, in the digital classics, including um, ones that we've seen today, the Perseus Library, certainly the work that Helma has done at, and Philologic has contributed to this and a number of other resources. So um, we're, some, we're in some ways just putting these resources together to allow you to take them with you to other texts and other sites. And I have the exercise here, but I think I'll stop now. Um, uh. Great, thanks very much, Bridget, that's cool. Um, Thanks also for, for racing through at the end there, although uh, you, you could, have, could have taken a bit more time so that you started later. Um, quick question um, to Maria, who was um, going to give another presentation here at the end. How much of what you were going to say about syntactic searching could be put off to the tree banking session, do you think? Well, um since I'm not actually sure what will be uh, Timo and Marco Passarotti be speaking about using tree banks afterwards, but I can I could do this very quickly <laughs> for a short thing. Okay, if you think that's five, okay. five minutes, and then we can yes. go to the discussion. Yes, no problem. Yeah. So, okay, so now I will screen share again. Okay, so uh, really what was now obvious that uh, we really need in order to search the syntactic structures, the rela relationships of the words really need to be added into the data and, and Bridget already showed some of the tree banks. So the syntactic annotation, tree banking, is a topic that we will uh, have two sessions on later on this spring and uh, also searching syntactic things are these uh, pro, uh, R uh, sessions and uh, last year's synergies uh, we had also two sessions on tree banking and searching tree banks so these can be used uh, for referencing also the basic thing is you need to know how, how the syntactic annotation is done when you search something. So this is about the, this is one tree bank. Again, I will not go through that anymore. Um, I was just going to say that we have really different possibilities and without programming skills, it is possible, but you still need to learn some sort of query language. So the Proil corpus, uh, which has Greek and Latin texts, uh, the New Testament, for example, in several languages, there are two different interfaces and Doug Haug was speaking about those last year. And then we have the ancient Greek and Latin dependency tree bank, uh, uh, where, which Bridget was talking about. There is this uh, site structural search, which has a selection of Greek texts where you can do queries quite easily without any further knowledge. But for the both corpora, you, I was going to quickly show you uh, this Tundra site. Uh, so let's go there. So this is uh, a web tool for tree bank research where there are many, many different tree banks already available. And you have Perseus Greek and you have a Perseus Latin there. You, in fact, also do have a Proel Greek and Proel Latin there. I'm just quickly showing one search that I 
sort of, I haven't been using this very much. So this is an example of uh, that. It's not so difficult <laughs> to find out how to query here. So you have a query language help here, which then uh, really helps you how to get started. It's a query, la query language based on Tiger search language. And here we have a first sentence of this corpus. And it's easy here then also find some references of what you perhaps are looking at, looking for uh, then how these things are marked. The sentence is also here with all, all the uh, different categories to search. Um, so I will uh, write. quickly copy and paste uh, my search string <laughs> from my file. So I was thinking that I would like to be searching, some, some people might like to search for uh, accusative and infinitive structures, which are perhaps, uh, uh, there is the verb say, deco. Uh, and there is an infinitive which is object to that. So here I will uh, zoom in a bit. So I have first the query for the lemma for the, the verb deco. So that I, could, I will give different get different entries of, of the verb say. And uh, the dependency is here with, with the uh, arrow. And I'm looking for something that is uh, under directly under the verb say as an object, and that that thing is in the infinitive mood. I was actually sort of checking these things from here, for example, we have um, I can actually zoom in this as well. Um, So deco is here, and uh, I can actually sort of look up, look up that uh, what these different markup systems are, and for the infinitive mood, infinitive works in this thing, and and it's it is object to this verb. So this is how I sort of quickly put up this kind of query. And if I run this, I do get, well, for example, <laughs> first this sentence, but there are 30 different versions. Of course, these are not necessarily all accusative uh, with infinitive structures. They are all uh, sentences, structures where uh, there is the verb to say, and there is an in infinitive, which is directly dependent on that. Uh, verb as an object. So if I would further want to really have accusative with infinitive structures, then I know that in the tree banks they also have uh, the uh, accusative part marked as, as the subject. So in, in that way I could modify uh, this search still. with um, adding a subject which is dependent on this and the case is accusative. So in this way you could, you could sort of play around and find different sorts of structures. You just need to know how the tree banks are actually done uh, in, in each corpus because, for example, if I would now take the Proyel Latin uh, 
and copy and paste this search there, it would not work because the uh, tree banking system is slightly different there. Okay, this is actually all I wanted to show you at this moment. Great, thanks very much, Maria, and thanks um, to Hello and Bridget for the, uh, for the other presentation. I think students will have a lot of fun um, experimenting with all of, um, well, maybe all is, is beneficious, but with individually with a lot of the things you've uh, you've shown. Um, and I think I think there's there's a lot that most people who, who use search on online databases probably are unaware of 90% of uh, of the possibilities of what you've shown. So I think that's that's going to be very valuable for. For all of us, um, we're um, we're sort of at the end of our allotted time, but I think we can we can keep going for a few more minutes if everybody is um, is happy to. Um, does anybody anybody else here have any any questions or comments they want to make? Either specific questions on individual presentations or tools, or or general um, feedback of any kind. Uh, just uh, uh, a short comment uh, at the beginning because uh, well first of all thank you very much for this great session really <laughs> it was fantastic one note about uh, your presentation maria you mentioned at the beginning for the tlg the intertextual phrase matching then you didn't have time to show that um one interesting thing is that uh, you in the tlg you can compare different uh, uh, texts by different authors but now also different editions. They have uh, very few authors, uh, because I think they are starting this, uh, uh, including different editions, but now you can compare um, two editions of the same author. For Tragic Poets, I think Eskilos definitely, and other authors. Just uh, as a short note, of course, this session was full of interesting things. I wanted to mention this. If you go to browse, Parallel browsing, I think, then then you have uh, these uh, functionality compare editions. Presumably, presumably that's just for those authors where the TLG have entered a more recent edition than they originally had. I know that was the case for both Homer and Euripides um, when I was there twenty years ago. And that's presumably a, a small number of authors that the editions are very clearly in need of updating, and so quite rightly they don't throw away the old ones. And that's that's good to see them being used in this concrete way. Anyone else want to add anything? Go ahead, Simon. Um, I might be quite old fashioned here. I mean, I, I'm still in a world of having um, uh, TLG installed on the hard disk of my computer from back in the day when it came on a CD-ROM. And I'm still using Diogenes, which is it's not bad. I mean, I, I you know, it, it, you can tell it, for example, that you want to part a speech like a stop word, relative pronoun or whatever. But it seems even when it's on your hard disk, it seems to take an age uh, to do searches for things. And, uh, and I don't know, I mean, is this one of these cases where it's just like support has been discontinued? You know, you just kind of can't get toys for doing this and you have to be searching these online corpora or um or not um you know, is there something better than diogenes i think is the question um if i um yes i'm good see if i um I, I think that uh, peter heslin is um is actively working on a um on a new version um, his uh, current version depended crucially on a particular flavor of older Firefox, and he's getting away from that. Um, I do believe that our, um, our licenses to use the, the TLG with Diogenes um, have um, officially expired, but Latin, um, uh, Latin corpora are definitely in. It was very interesting if you um, if, if you're using Diogenes and um, uh, other, uh, and, and the, say, say the Packard corpus um, or Perseus under Philologic together, you'll, you'll see how um, the design choices are gonna have consequences for what kind of results you see. So um, I didn't initially understand that one of the differences between um, what I was doing and what Peter is doing as a linguist um, I'm really interested in 
um, in what the frequency of things is. And, um, and so I'm going to count up all the instances. And so I don't really, in a, one particular search, I really want one edition of every text. Um, so that's a difference with the, what the TLG might be, uh, might be up to with these multiple, yeah. Uh, yeah. Multi multiple versions, which is very interesting for a different reason. So ho however, um, Peter, with a more literary frame of mind, was more interested in not so much getting every single instance counting it separately, but every passage in which a word appears. So that if you're having three Caesars in the space of five lines, you'll get that as one passage, right? So what I first thought was a disconnect in our, um, uh, or, or some kind of bug, turned out to be actually a feature. Yeah, this see. is his choice, yeah. and my, my choice is to count every Caesar. Uh, so, so there are these very interesting um, differences in, um, in approach uh, between, the, uh, between the different interfaces. And I think you know, what's, what's really wonderful about the, what, is, what Bridget is showing is how, um, as you're sitting down with the text, you get all the array of possible assistant uh, assistance um, lined up uh, for you. Um, what I hope to do is when they have found out that this is a dative that is construed with X, um, that they might go to a, a tree bank search um, mm -hmm. uh, interface or a philologic search interface and see, okay, does this happen a lot? Or is it actually pros and accusative that has happened that is going to be yeah. used more, right? So. Uh, to to do more kind of corpus linguistic um, searching um, um, as you uh, as you move back and forth between these different options and you know as Bridget mentioned um, we all have the great advantage that we are um, reusing and recycling data and giving our own twist on you know, particular use cases and user cases um, so I, I really. I really love that these things work together this way. So. Yeah, I'd just like to add to that too. I mean, we definitely, so Alphys definitely hopes in the future to be able to do exactly what you were suggesting, Helma, which is once they've done a look up in Alphys, then offer them the opportunity to go search Philologic or Logion or, or whatever, or tree bank search, you know, to, to provide it as a jumping off point to all those mm -hmm. wonderful other resources that are available online. Um, the other thing to point out is that Alphys, although you currently have to be online to access our services, the tools themselves do work with texts that are offline. So if you have, if you can, as long as you can load them in your browser. So if you have a, pay a, a text on your browser, on your, on, you know, that you can represent in a very simple HTML format, you can actually load that in your browser. And as long as you have an internet connection, Alpheus will work. Um, in the future, we hope to offer more offline functionality, but even right now you can work with any text you have on your on your desktop, as long as it can be loaded in your browser. Thank you. Okay. Um, I, maybe, um, if, yeah, maybe, maybe, um, one postscript, um, uh, we, uh, in our pre-discussion, um, we talked about stop words and um, highly frequent words. And um, I think you saw one instance of a highly frequent form or word, I don't remember, right? Where um, Philologic showed up to 20,000 um, occurrences. Um, so uh, Simon, I hope your worries are put to rest uh, there for yeah. <laughs> highly frequent uh, searches. Yeah. Um, and but I, I will still, uh, of course, say um, that you know once you have you know worked your way through the twenty thousand, <laughs> um, it's um, it's it's always helpful to um, you know recheck. Oh, this is actually Jeb's edition versus Lloyd Jones's OCT, et cetera, right? We can, um, we're, thankfully we're not existing in a vacuum. No, I said, uh, yeah, yeah, thank you, thanks. Cool, yeah, no, this, this is, 
this is useful. And as I say, we could we could we could almost certainly carry on for for hours with this. Um, I had a, a brief technical question. Um, well, it's a two two layer question for for Bridget about about Alpheus. Um, you mentioned that Alpheus currently supports Greek and Latin and, and partially supports um, Arabic and Farsi or or Persian. Um, so the first part of my question is what um, what are you considering adding support for other ancient Mediterranean languages um, at some point, such as um, Hebrew and Aramaic or Egyptian and so forth? Um, and the second part of the question is, is really sort of deconstructing that question a little bit, um, which is um, to what degree is adding support for a new language um, a question of adding an entirely new grammar? Or to what degree is it simply just loading up some texts and making it, um, making it able to parse those things? Um, or maybe 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 a, a more general question is how how repurposable are your tools if someone wanted to make those tools um, uh, apply those tools to Sanskrit or to Old Cham or, or some other language that um, that, that wasn't you know, that, that you guys have no interest in implementing? Right. Well, so the answer is yeah, yes. We absolutely would like to add more languages, and to reframe it a little bit, we we absolutely would like the community to add more languages to Alphas. We actually, I didn't, I didn't mention it because it's still in very much of an alpha state. But we actually do support in a very small way ancient Ethiopic right now because um, Pietro Luzo from the working on the Beta Meshef project, and I think, and I think. Um, Heidelberg is has has added um, support for that to Alpheus, and we would love for other people working on other languages to add support. And really, it can be done incrementally. So the minimum you need is a is basically a morphological service, which uh, is available as a web service, which could be called to do parsing. And that if if all you wanted to do was provide morphological uh, uh, analysis and maybe some short definitions. That's really all you would need to do. And then, the, you know, we, we're still working on documenting how to do it, but um, but it's it's you have to adhere to the the API that that we that we publish, um, which is not it's not too hard to do and can be added as a layer on top of an existing service. Um, I actually have um, and Gabby, I can send a link to you if you want to publish it later. Uh, Pietro did a write up of how he added ancient added the ancient support and um, that is the first step at trying to provide guidance on that but it can also it can it, so these 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 additional resources can be added incrementally you can start with a morphological service and then if you have a grammar that you can link in you can add the grammar if you have a full or full dictionary service available you can add that um, and then also inflection tables or other resources so yes we, we I hope that um, we can get to the place where it's very easy for people to to do that. Great, thanks. Uh, to what degree have or could your the, the Alpheus tools be um, be interfaced with, for example, the classical language toolkit and other 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 those massive collaborative um, tools? Um, I think that right now we are on a, a web service type of uh, interaction. So those tools could sit behind, a, a, if somebody wanted to write a simple web service API wrapper for some of them, that would be one way to do it. Um, I have not had time to explore all of the possibilities there, but I certainly think that's something very interesting to consider. So, so just to clarify that answer a little bit, so the Alpheus services could be called in CLTK as a web service, or, or some of the CLTK tools could be called in Alpheus? In fact, both. Um, the Alpheus, was, sir, Alpheus is a set of libraries that, that, and also a set of services, right? So if okay. CLTK wanted to take advantage of the morphology service or the lexical lookup service, mm -hmm. they absolutely could. And likewise, if there are services that the CLTK provides that could be made available, via a REST API. They could also be integrated. But you don't know for a fact that they have yet? I don't think that they have, no. OK. OK. Um, anything else anyone wants to add or ask? OK, then we're, yeah, we're, we're, we're about 15 minutes past the end of our, of our allotted slot, so maybe we should um, we should just thank um, Bridget and Helma and Maria again, yes, um, and, and Simon for your questions, and Monica for being here as always. 
Um, and we'll, uh, we'll see you all next week for the session on geographic annotation, which um, is a title which may sound familiar to people who followed Synergesis in the past, but it will be a, a slightly new and different approach this semester. So we'll, we'll look forward to that. Um, great. Thank you very much. See you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Cheers.